Hey everyone, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Prasad and I'm an engineer at the uh, workload identity team uh, in Uber. So this is the story of changing the Spiffy ID of uh, all Spire enabled workloads. And the challenges and learning came out of uh, that exercise. So let's get into it. So this is a brief agenda. We'll go over the background, uh, which will involve uh, the current state of Spire uh, that runs in Uber Prod, uh, some details about the infra. Uh, then we'll move to the problem statement, uh, what problem we were trying to solve and what approaches we took to those problems. Uh, we can go over the challenges and then learnings of uh, this exercise. And we can end it with the q and So let's look at it. The scale. Uh, so Uber has thousands of hosts uh, which uh, uh, have uh, Spire agent running on them. And we operate in dozens of uh, data centers. Uh, our infra is, is in still evolving. Uh, it has different orchestrators which schedules different types of workloads. And this is uh, an important detail because I will get back to it later. Uh, this also means uh, uh, these workloads are going to have different Nazi requirements. And if moving on to the identities, we have um, around a million plus unique identities across uh, different zones. And uh, Otzi is like an in-house solution. Uh, it's like uh, any policy-based solution where you list a policy for your workload, which has uh, you know allow list of a bunch of Spiffy IDs, and then it's all wrapped in our library, which we built on top of uh, Go Spiffy or Go Java. And let's look at the sample Spire registration, especially what, what it looks like. So this is the registration which has feels like Spiffy ID. Uh, that's the identifier of overload. Then it's parent, it's where it rolls out to. And the selectors are, uh, in this example, are the Docker labels, which service name foo and the partition prod. So how it works is when the a uh, Docker container matches with uh, service name and prior partition, these two uh, values, that Docker container will receive this identity and it will contain the Spiffy ID of uh, example.org, which is a trust domain uh, and one variable that we have defined uh, and then foo slash prod. So the problem here was, uh, as I mentioned, our infra is evolving. And they plan to change some environment variables and their values. And like I mentioned in previous example, like our Spiffy ID looks like trust domain and it contains some environment variables and then the workload identifier. Now, if the infra changes the values of some environment variables, then Spiffy ID will change. And which means the same workload uh, is going to get a new Spiffy ID now. And so this means all the Odyssey policies associated with that workload, we need to change and get updated to the new Spiffy ID. So what are the problem approaches we took to address this situation, right? Uh, one of the basic approaches is keep the old Spiffy ID. Uh, there's no need to change, even if uh, underlying environment variable changes, you just have a custom hardcore logic to you know assign it to the previous value. Uh, we feel like this is not the right solution. It's like pointing the problems, not really solving it, and uh, it will involve changes to Spire registration flow with some complex logic, which may work, but not necessarily all the time. So another approach was. Uh, Getting rid of this environment uh, variable uh, in this from the Spiffy ID, uh, especially this uh, variable was really not needed to uniquely identify a workload. 
So it makes sense to get rid of it uh, because uh, this can change uh, in future as well. So when we decide to take this approach of getting rid of this unwanted variable from ID, which essentially means all 50 IDs which follow this format needs to change. And it exactly sounds like migrations and <laughs> all the parties involved in migrations, uh, we, they know it's not fun. Uh, so as we dig into this approach and started to get into details, then we realized that we have a lot of RC strategies uh, in place for different type of workloads. And the, the reason for that is uh, there were some workloads that onboarded to us before we even created a, a, a custom home-based RC uh, solution. And some of them had different requirements, which, uh, uh, you know, like circular dependency ones where they could not deploy, uh, can depend on the uh, solution that we have developed. So, and some of the weird cases we saw is the Spiffy ID was hard coded into the code, uh, it was part of config. And this essentially translated into us you know, chasing all these different stakeholders, which are directly consuming Spiffy ID and uh, updating them, uh, uh, you know, deploying those changes, making sure uh, all the OTC policies are updated. And another, uh, as we looked into this more, we saw another opportunity where uh, essentially what we can do is create a new registration, right? So the same workload, can receive two identities. Uh, in Spire Upstream, you can get multiple identities, uh, same with our RC solution, but there's no really way to choose a preferred identity. So in the previous example that I showed Foo, Foo can get two identities, but there's no way to choose a preferred one. And the same was the case in our uh, RT solution where there wasn't a way to define a preferred identity. So what this essentially meant was, as soon as we would have created a new registration, uh, workload could have gotten the new identity and could have caused uh, uh, failures if the RC had not been updated before. So as the migration steps, the that you know limited us to update all RC policies before we even change the format. And this was, like I mentioned, this is a time consuming process. Uh, we had to chase uh, various stakeholders to update their configs. Uh, we changed some configs for them, waited for the deployments. And there were some of the snowflake cases where, uh, so the, Workloads, you know, especially you can think of uh, platform services, you know, which run on every single host. Uh, they could take a days to receive a new build. So essentially, we were blocked uh, until uh, all of these uh, workloads are have received this new build, which contains both the old and new Spiffy IDs. And so. You know, some of the snowflake cases, we had to create white white lists, you know, to move ahead with uh, other uh, workloads which are ready to consume for new format. So that was the first step. And then we just went and updated the PFA format, created all these different new registrations. And uh, another thing we had to look for is, uh, as I mentioned, we have a, you know, a lot of registrations. We had to look for scalability uh, in terms of how many registrations uh, Spire Server can handle. Uh, recently, we are also seeing uh, uh, agent which caches uh, different identities can cause uh, out of memory uh, traps. So that was, uh, one, uh, that was one issue where you cannot just go ahead and uh, update all the uh, identities. You know, we have to take it into batches, small batches update the new ones, introduce the new ones and remove the old ones so that you don't uh, cross the total number of registrations or uh, increase in registrations per agent count. 
And then the last step was just, uh, you know, uh, removing old Spiffy ID from auth sees. Uh, so from all this uh, entire effort, there were obviously few learnings. And one of them was uh, we need to uh, advocate for a uniform uh, auth sees solution across work different workloads. And if we had that and then avoid, you know, the snowflake cases like uh, directly using Spiffy IDs, uh, especially in code. Uh, so that would have essentially uh, helped us our interaction to just a limited number of uh, folks and then could have uh, helped prioritize and do the deployments and, you know, save some time uh, that we lost in the first step of a migration. And second point is uh, around handling of multiple identities. And this one is still in, in, uh, under discussion. Uh, like we are not sure like where uh, was the right place to handle multiple identities. Like should SPI registration has a field for a default identity or preferred uh, preference number or our C should, uh, limit on some time-based or preferred way of uh, choosing identity. And this is something that we can actually use the help of uh, our open source community and you know, get uh, ideas on how we can handle this. And another learning we took from the this exercise is our Spiffy ID format needs to be as concise as possible. And it should have a very limited number of dynamic variables, which are only associated with the uniquely identifying workload. Adding static fields are fine, but if uh, your dynamic variables in the Spiffy ID format depend on a lot of uh, stakeholders, then there are chances that they may get, they evolve and then require you to do a uh, Spiffy ID migration. So that's something that uh, we uh, thought thorough and decided to came with this new Spiffy ID format, which obviously contains trust domain. And we introduced this orchestrator as a field. So orchestrator is, is nothing but a scheduler of a workload. And uh, the reason for introducing this into the format was uh, there's usually no guarantees with of uniqueness between two workloads. So for example, the foo may be scheduled by scheduler A and also by, by scheduler B. So it might cause confusion if the scheduler is not field, uh, scheduler field is not present in a Spiffy ID format. And someone needs to define separate auth C policies for those. And another advantage of uh, adding the orchestrator we felt is when we enable the R back. So if uh, registrants are the ones who are doing the registrations or orchestrators are the ones who are doing registrations, then we can simply put this as a prefix. So the orchestrator A can only work on the Spiffy IDs, like a creation deletion on the, of the trust domain plus orchestrator A prefix. Second part, uh, last part of this Spiffy ID format is unique workload identifier. And this one actually depends on the type of workload and the auth C requirements. Uh, so typical service, you know, stateless services, uh, we could have something like service A and the partition it could be production or staging as a identifier. Some other uh, low level services may not even care about this partition field. So it's, it really depends on their auth requirements, but uh, our goal is, uh, as we decided, could be keep the identifier as concise as small as possible. So this was our experience and uh, uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you for listening.